Since character reveals only happen every so often during a Smash game's development cycle, the brunt of speculation ends up being about not just who could get revealed next, but about everyone the fanbase thinks has a shot and how likely they are to get in. A lot of talk surrounding likeliness is highly subjective and built on personal opinions, more often than not. Naturally, it leads to a lot of arguments starting when someone's personal favorites or underdogs get ridden off by someone else. I've been guilty of that myself before. But unlike a lot of other aspects of Smash development, keeping an ear to the ground for what Sakurai says doesn't always give a clear picture about how more or less likely a given character is. It helps to know what the dev team looks for in a newcomer, but we don't know 100% of what goes on behind the scenes. We miss out on viable options that stood out to the developers because we didn't know they were viable options. Sometimes it's as simple as Sakurai or someone else on the team having a really interesting concept that none of us fans thought of. Sometimes we even write off a character as being impossible until it turns out they had a chance all along. Case in point, did anyone seriously think the Wii Fit Trainer had a shot, much less fighting using yoga poses and exercise equipment? Or that Pac-Man's moveset could be made into a love letter to classic Namco arcade games? Or how about Robin, written off by so many who assumed Krom was a guarantee and that therefore no other Fire Emblem character could happen? And don't get me started on this guy. But most importantly, any given character can, from our perspective, become more or less likely at the drop of a hat. Events can unfold to undermine a fan favorite assumed to be a frontrunner, or take a former long shot and give them an actual concrete chance. That brings us to our challenger today, a dark horse from a cult classic who may just have a chance to grant a wish we long thought was forgotten. Gino has quite the reputation surrounding him nowadays, but to fully understand the character, we need to understand the story of his home game, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Our tale begins with Mario rescuing Peach from Bowser's clutches yet again, only for everything to take a sharp left turn when a colossal sword plummets from far above and plants itself in Bowser's castle. The sword turns out to be a harbinger of an evil force known as the Smithy Gang, an extra-dimensional army of living weapons who plan to conquer the Mushroom Kingdom and all lands beyond it. To make matters worse, the Smithy Gang's opening strike on Mario's homeworld was to destroy the Sacred Star Road. You see, that's a really big deal because people in the Marioverse seem to worship the stars, and they play a critical part in receiving the people's wishes, judging them, and granting those they deem worthy. So let's say you're an ordinary Mushroom Kingdom citizen who's hoping to land their dream job, or mend ties with members of their family, or maybe catch the eye of that special someone. As long as the Star Road is shattered, none of that will ever happen. It's up to Mario and his allies to stop the Smithy Gang, find the broken star pieces to restore Star Road, and bring peace to the land once more. So, Gino is actually one of the Guardian Stars who survived the destruction of Star Road. Witnessing the Smithy Gang's attacks on the innocent people of Rosetown, he decides to take matters into his own hands, descending from the heavens to the Mushroom Kingdom. He chooses a humble child's toy to inhabit, enlarges it to human size to better interact with the world, and sets off for the labyrinthine forest to the north to confront the Smithy Gang commander orchestrating the siege. That's where Mario and his other ally at the time come in, as they follow Gino into the woods, tail him to the boss's location, and join forces with him to defeat it. From there, Mario and the player are made aware of the Star Road and just how high the stakes are, and Gino joins the party and becomes an important ally for the rest of the way. So he's a good guy who's basically the Marioverse equivalent of an angel possessing an action figure. Tell me that isn't cool. Oh, and Gino is actually the name of the puppet he's inhabiting. His true name is unpronounceable, so he just sticks with Gino for convenience. And that's not even going into how cool he is in battle. Gino's weapons are various parts for his doll body that let him transform his limbs and fire a wide range of E-rated munitions. That's right, this toy has rocket punching, rifle shooting, laser firing action. Is it any wonder why seven-year-old me thought he was awesome? Or why so many other people who've played Super Mario RPG think the same thing? So if Gino's this cool, why haven't we seen him since? Well, Super Mario RPG was a collaboration between Nintendo and Squaresoft, now known one merge later as Square Enix. You see, most of the original characters created for the game became Square IPs, Gino included. 
And since their relationship with Nintendo got rocky in the late 90s and the number of Square Enix games on Nintendo systems paled in comparison to those of other companies for a long time, you see why Gino's only appearance since is a cameo in Mario & Luigi's Superstar Saga. But despite this, he's had some ties to the Smash community. He had pretty significant support for Brawl despite how seemingly unlikely he was. Said support had fallen off significantly by the time Smash 4 rolled around, which was why it was such a surprise when a Gino Mii costume was announced. But that pales in comparison to what we learned the following February. Sakurai was interviewed in the Japanese magazine Nintendo Dream about Smash DLC, and the topic turned to the Gino costume. And that was where Sakurai dropped a bombshell. Gino was legitimately considered for Brawl. Turns out Sakurai had been pulling for him the whole time. And now we find ourselves at a very interesting situation. We've reason to believe a Switch version of Smash 4 is coming, complete with new content. Gino was never going to be the first Square Enix character. That was going to be someone from Final Fantasy. But now Cloud is in, Square Enix is officially involved in Smash, and Ryu proved that third-party companies can get more than one character in if there's a compelling reason for it. Boasting the iconic status required of a third-party newcomer thanks to his game's status as a cult classic and bearing a thumbs up from Sakurai already, could the stars truly be aligning for Gino to join the fight? Maybe. If that wish were to come true, what could Gino be like in Smash? So first of all, Gino's original render is, uh, dated. To bring him into the modern age, he'd need a revamped appearance. No major overhauls, just some aesthetic touch-ups to help him feel new again. The render on the left by the Smashified team is a great example of how it could be done. Gino's alternate colors would pull from, <laughs> get this, I can't believe I came up with this one. So there are seven star pieces you obtain over the course of Super Mario RPG, and the default colors of Gino's hat and cape are pretty close to the color of the first one. So what if they base six of Gino's alts on those of the other star pieces? But that'd still leave the eighth color open. Maybe for that one, they could give him white cloth and purple hair to reference Mallow, the other Square Maid party member in the game. Gino's personality shows throughout the course of his game, and it befits who he is. Virtuous, heroic, and highly motivated, Gino is eager to take action and right some wrongs. He takes his mission very seriously, though he does still laugh when something funny happens. In Smash, this personality could appear through fluid movement and very precise and focused attacking animations signs of someone who knows what he's doing. But since he's inhabiting a puppet, it'd be neat if there were some situations like getting hit or stunned where the body would make short marionette-like motions. Nothing uncanny or creepy since he's a good guy, but enough to remind you that it's merely a shell he's controlling. Overall, Gino's animations could be designed to feel like a force of good who is not of this world, which is what he is. As for his weapons, Gino's body packs an awful lot of heat for some child's toy. Attack animations would need to be carefully done to avoid feeling too close to real-world firearms. Fortunately, that wouldn't be hard. Just give him that classic, whimsical Mario feel. Now, let's get into the inner workings and numbers of how Gino could fight. His playstyle is kind of a no-brainer to anyone familiar with his home game. Gino's weapons and special attacks have him use physical projectiles and magic in tandem. And he'd follow suit here for a playstyle built around using them while limiting opponents' ways to retaliate. And the precision elements, well, you'll see. Gino is the fastest of the five party members in Super Mario RPG, so in Smash he'd have good mobility overall to reflect that, a rare thing for a zoning-based character. He wouldn't be super fast though, both for balancing reasons and because his fellow Mario characters aren't exactly breaking speed records. Being floaty would add to his otherworldly celestial feel, and combined with high air acceleration, not Rosalina level, but pretty close, It'd make his movement feel as fluid and graceful as you'd expect from a living star. And also as frail and easy to send flying. So, what about those precision elements? Well, Super Mario RPG features a battle mechanic called Timed Hits that allows players to deal extra damage, take reduced damage, or other extra effects by performing extra button presses or additional inputs with precise timing. It was a groundbreaking idea for RPGs at the time, and it's one that Nintendo has continued to use in both the Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi spin-off series under the new name Action Commands. Since Gino's game was the starting point of such an important part of Mario's RPG and adventure game spin-offs, why not make Action Commands a focal point of his moveset? 
Performing an extra input during certain attacks at just the right time would enhance the move to do more damage, add an additional hitbox, or other beneficial effects. Nail them consistently, and Geno's otherwise pedestrian damage output would rise to be as high as it is in Super Mario RPG. Action commands would allow him to hit hard and deal significant shield damage. The frame window's form would be small, but not extremely so. Enough to require precise timing, but still lenient enough to get them consistently mid-match once you have the timing down. To make them balance, the attacks with action commands would be high committal and have pretty long end lag to go with their power. But this all actually fits Geno's personality. He's not the type to pester you with a bunch of weak projectiles while you try to get in on him. He'd rather just blow you away on the spot. And as we go into potential moves for Gino, you'll see just how much action commands can add to his arsenal. His moveset would be best served as having a combination of physical attacks and projectile shots, and all of the projectiles would have an action command. The commands would vary depending on the type of projectile Gino shot for the attack, and they'd be consistent across every move that uses that type of projectile. Setting him up this way would make learning the action commands an intuitive process instead of being stuck memorizing a long list of random inputs. So for example, Gino's jab could start with a 1-2 swing, then end with the rocket punch he uses in battle when he has no weapon equipped. Pressing A right at the rocket's max distance would set off a sound to tell you it worked and make the rocket explode into starlight for an extra hit. The same rocket punch could also show up in places like his forward air or back throw, and the action command would carry over and have the same effect, just press A right at the end. Gino's other weapon types would also appear in the moveset with their own action commands. Finger shot and handgun could appear in his forward tilt, forward throw, or shot in an arc for his up air. Press A right as Gino shoots for their command, almost like double tapping A. Hand cannon could pop up as his up throw and back air. For their command, press A while the first shot is active to fire a second, faster one. And Gino's ultimate weapon, star gun, could be used for his smashes with a command allowing the player to tap A up to three times to fire up to three clusters of stars. The first two rounds would have a brief stun effect to them, so they could have their own knockback while still giving the third time to hit. Then some of his moves would be purely physical attacks, like his down tilt, dash attack, and neutral air. None of these would have action commands. Finally, there are a couple potential things we could do for taunts. A pretty easy one would be Geno's victory animation when you win a battle. Or another could have him rummage around under his hat like when he uses an item, complete with the sound effect Hey, a freebie! And if they wanted to be real slick, they could sneak his KO pose into his tripping animation. Ah, but we still have something important to go over. Gino's special moves would be a key part of his arsenal, and action commands would play a key role in them. Starting off at neutral, his signature Gino Beam the first special attack he learns in Super Mario RPG. A no-frills magic attack that allows Gino to charge and fire a wide laser at a single enemy. The longer you hold the charge, the more damage it does, unless you hold it too long. Gino Beam can transfer into Smash pretty easy, actually. It'd be a charge and release special with three main levels of charge, indicated by up to three glowing red stars that appear one at a time and rotate around Gino as he prepared the attack. It'd have good range and solid damage at one star of charge that gain additional range and power at further charges, becoming a long distance kill option at its peak strength if you can land such a telegraphed attack. But if you let go before one star even shows up, or hold too long after the charge tops off, all you get is a weak laser with short range. A dud! Geno Beam could be a zoning tool in a pinch, but its main use would be to trap landings, especially if your opponent's in free fall and can't mix up the timing of when they land. As a neat visual touch, the laser and the light surrounding Gino as he charged would glow brighter at each level. Light blue at one star and nearly white at three, with a darker blue color for the dud. Yeah, if you're wondering, these are all just going to be Gino's specials from the game. Its side is, no surprise here, Gino Whirl. It's famous in Super Mario RPG for being the single strongest attack in the game if you nail the action command, inflicting what is functionally instant death. It even works on a couple bosses they forgot to make immune to it. For its smash incarnation, Gino would spin and then release a disc of golden energy that pierces through opponents. Press B while it's flying, and it'd explode on the spot for damage and knockback as high as a smash attack. Yeah, we want to tone it down here for balance. No one in their right mind would let it be an instant kill and smash. It ain't killing as early as even finishing touch, but it's still strong enough to net KOs around when some of Gino's other stuff would. 
But of course, there's a catch. You see, you need pinpoint timing to pull it off, because the explosion would have a tiny hitbox that couldn't be triggered unless Gino hasn't yet moved after throwing it, and setting the explosion off would put Gino in significant end lag. It'd be a matter of learning when to just throw the disc for damage and when to try to hit with the sweet spot. Moving along, at the up special is Gino Boost. It's actually a buffing move in Super Mario RPG that raises a party member's attack power and also their defense if you hit the action command. I ended up repurposing it for this concept. Consider letting it still have a buff effect here, but I decided it'd be one gimmick too many in an already complicated moveset. Remember, sometimes making a compelling concept means knowing when not to carry something over. So, purely as recovery, Gino would use star power to ascend skyward. Press B right at the apex of the boost to propel yourself further. It'd have minor startup, think Corrin's Dragon Ascent, and you'd have minor lateral control when rising. Its effective distance and velocity would be similar to Firefox on the initial ascent, then if you nail the action command, you'd go half that distance further at double the speed. It'd knock opponents away with mad knockback on the way up and good knockback on the final burst. Could even have a visual effect that references the original via red energy that sort of resembles arrows pointing upward. Alright Super Mario RPG fans, you already know which one's down. Geno Blast. On use, Geno would release a pillar of light upward that separate into multiple rays and bombard the area below. The higher the charge, the more rays would come down, up to 5 at max. I'm split on how to handle the action command for charging it. Maybe the same three stars as Geno Beam, or maybe having the player mash B during a one second window. It'd be a question of whether to stay true to the source or give all of Geno's specials their own action commands. Geno Blast would be a delayed zoning tool in anti-air. Geno can move as soon as he released the light upward, and it'd take about two thirds of a second from there for the light to start splitting off and coming down. The initial ray would have no hitbox and rise as high as Battlefield's upper platform, and the bombarding rays would fall the same distance, going down to the height Gino was at when he performed the attack. No easy edge guards unless your opponent goes high or their hurt box goes above the ledge before they snap to it. And the final smash? Well, there's only one special left. Gino Flash! His strongest magic and arguably his ultimate technique. On use, Gino would transform his entire puppet body into the form of a cannon, then fire his true star form a short distance forward read in fire and light. The energy surrounding Gino would rapidly expand to a size matching the max size of Rosalina's Power Star, searing anyone in range for rapidly building damage. Then one final surge of power would release all of the accumulated energy in a devastating flash for massive damage and knockback. And Gino would return to his borrowed form and fight once more. This is what Gino could bring to Smash. A hero who descended from the heavens to do his part in saving the world. Combining his own celestial powers with that of the child's toy and habits, he assails his enemies with a wide range of ballistic attacks. With expert timing, his weapons could pack even greater force that no evil could stand against. More than just about anyone right now, Gino embodies how much a character's apparent likeliness can change so quickly. He's gone from being a no-hoper a little over a year ago to having a plausible means of getting in. Just goes to show, the ebb and flow of speculation may screw over the occasional fan favorite sometimes, but it can also give a chance to some of our wildest wishes. Our challenger next time knows all about wishing to play a bigger part. They're an underdog with a following who's been on the rise since Brawl's day, but their greatest asset is their proficiency in a type of weapon Smash hasn't yet seen. I know all about wishing for things to be better off. I've gone through a lot of difficult personal stuff in the last several years with limited means to do anything about them. But thanks to some new plans and recent developments, the future might just finally be a brighter one. And I hope some of you listening will be able to offer your support. Let's finally get this show on the road, shall we? Until next time.